as of January 1st, 2023, Canada has a brand new and somewhat controversial law that's come into place that impacts foreign home buyers. In this video, I'll be discussing the prohibition on the purchase of residential property by Non-Canadians Act. So, let's jump into this right away. As of January 1st, 2023, the federal government has banned non-Canadians from purchasing residential property here in Canada. The law that created this ban is called the Prohibition on the Purchase of Residential Property by Non-Canadians Act, also known as the PPRP. The ban is in effect for a two-year period. So here are five key points about the ban. Number one, non-Canadians are defined as individuals who are neither Canadian citizens nor permanent residences. Number two, residential property includes detached and semi-detached homes, condominiums and row houses, and even mixed use zone properties that might not have residential components built on them just yet. Number three, the ban restricts non-Canadians from purchasing property directly or indirectly. This means that straw buyers or complex methods using corporations, friends, and family members who are Canadians or permanent residences to essentially hide a foreign investment will likely be caught violating this ban. Number four, this ban does not apply to non-Canadians who purchase residential property with their spouse or common law partner who is either a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. Number five, the act allows the government to pass future regulations regarding the ban. Essentially, these regulations help clarify any blind spots in the law, such as including other types of properties under the ban, or including more types of people as a class of exempted buyers or explaining how enforcement proceedings are to be handled on a practical level. The good news about this approach is that it allows the government to respond to any public concerns about how this ban is practically policed and enforced. The bad news, however, is that the law would likely change, and in most cases, rather unexpectedly and quietly. It will be everyone's individual responsibility to keep up to date with the ban and any changes that it makes. Now let's talk about how this two-year ban is going to be practically enforced. It's important to know that the ban is extremely strict in terms of its enforcement. Firstly, non-Canadians who are caught violating the ban can be fined up to $10,000. Additionally, those who knowingly assist a non-Canadian from violating the ban can be fined. This means that developers, realtors, mortgage brokers, and even lawyers for prospective home buyers need to be careful when advising prospective clients about buying residential property. Now thirdly, the most concerning enforcement mechanism is that a foreign home buyer can be forced to sell their property by a court order. In this case, the foreign home buyer must pay out the federal government's costs for putting the property up for sale, including all legal fees associated with bringing the matter to court. Additionally, if the home's value has increased since the non-Canadian had bought it, they would not be entitled to that windfall amount of the property value. For example, if Keith from Singapore bought a property here in Ontario for $800,000 and was found violating the ban, not only would Keith have to pay all the costs associated with the government going after him, plus the fines, if the court manages to sell his property at a higher price than he had paid, say $1.2 million, he would only be entitled to a maximum of eight hundred dollars the original price that he had bought it for, and well, probably less since he'd have to cough up a ton of legal fees and the penalties associated with the government going after him. Sorry Keith, while this new law is broad and has serious impacts for many foreign home buyers, there are some exceptions. Non-Canadians may be able to acquire residential property via probate, via family law applications such as divorce or separation, or as a gift from a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. Additionally, non-Canadians could potentially acquire property via some sort of trust created prior to January 1st, 2023. In my opinion, these are very narrow exceptions and haven't been fully tested in court or expanded upon by the federal government. Foreign home buyers should seek professional advice from a lawyer before getting their hopes up too high. Now, it is important to mention that the act does allow some non-Canadians to purchase residential property without violating this two-year ban. International students, people with work permits, and protected persons or refugees are all exempted under this two-year ban, provided that they meet extremely strict criteria. Now, in the case of international students, they must A, be enrolled in a program of authorized study at a designated learning institution, B, filed all income tax returns for each of the five tax years prior to the year that the home is purchased, C, were physically present in Canada for a minimum of 244 days in each of the five years prior to the year the home is purchased. D, the purchase price of the residential property can't exceed more than $500,000. And finally, E, they must not have purchased any other residential property prior to purchasing this home. In the case of non-Canadians with work permits, they must A, 
hold a work permit, or are authorized to work in Canada under the Immigration and Refugee Protection Regulations, B, have worked in Canada for a minimum period of three years within the four years prior to the year the home is purchased if the work is full time, C, have filed all required income tax returns for a minimum of three of the four tax years prior to the year the home is purchased, and finally D, they have not purchased more than one residential property. So look, it's pretty obvious from these criteria that it's not an easy process to qualify for an exemption, even if you are an international student or a foreign worker living in Canada. Now, in my opinion, I think some of these restrictions are pretty unrealistic. I mean, look at the international student exemption. In most cases, accredited institutions are universities and colleges, and the programs are mainly four years rather than five. On top of that, where are you going to find a property that is under 500K in Ontario? Now, as always, if you think you may have a chance of qualifying for an exemption, apart from speaking with a real estate lawyer, you'll also want to speak with an immigration lawyer and possibly an accountant before you go off looking for a home to buy. So this two-year ban is aimed to combat housing affordability and what the government considered to be uncontrolled real estate speculation by foreign investors. Now, while it is true that Canada had been experiencing a sharp increase in its housing prices, especially during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, this new law has caused a lot of controversy regarding whether foreign investors are the main concern of rising home prices and whether this ban is even effective at controlling housing affordability. The act has also raised some concerns on whether the federal government even has legal power to restrict home purchases since that would technically fall under every province's individual jurisdiction. Now, regardless of how you feel, this ban is here to stay and it does have some important practical implications that home buyers should be aware of. While Canada is a mosaic of different cultures and ethnicities, many Canadians or permanent residences still rely on help from abroad when buying a home. Making sure you understand the fine line between financial assistance from overseas and actually violating that two-year ban is an important part of the home buying process now. So if you're a non-Canadian or know someone who is a non-Canadian and is interested in purchasing residential property or investing here in Canada, reach out to a legal professional beforehand to assess your particular situation before making a decision. That's it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, click the like button and subscribe. Check out some more of the videos, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon.